good morning dear students today we will continue with our next part of experimental epidemiology till yesterday we have seen three first three steps of the randomized control trial that is preparation of a protocol then selecting reference and experimental groups then randomization how we allocate the subjects into control group and study group or experimental group today we will continue with our next step that is manipulation this is the flow chart i have given once again for your memory so in manipulation what is that we are doing as i have told experimental group is you are intervening in the process so in this step we manipulate the experimental group by deliberately applying or by stopping or withdrawing the suspected cause factor like for example we either give a particular drug for the treatment of the uh, disease or we remove particular uh, component of the food or dietary component which can give some give rise to some uh, health complication or any particular habit if we draw that habit maybe that uh, particular disease can uh, will not occur so this is as we have mentioned in the protocol as i told you protocol we have to follow what we have finally agreed upon so we manipulate at this stage so that we will bring out the change what we are expecting or what we are looking for in the experimental group so this manipulation creates an independent variable which will affect the dependent variable that is whose effect is determined by measurement of the final outcome that is the dependent variable like suppose as i have said independent variable if it is a drug or a vaccine and the dependent variable will be the occurrence of disease that is incidence of the disease or survival time or recovery period this is independent variable and the outcome is dependent variable so what we are manipulating here to see how the outcome is going to happen if we withdraw that particular or if we intervene and gives that particular drug what is the outcome of the disease whether the survival rate will increase or the person improves with that new drug or uh, he can feel better if we withdraw the habit of that person all these things we will examine and we will manipulate at this step and all this is done based upon what we agree in the protocol or what we have drawn in the protocol so next step is follow up in this follow up what we are going to do is where we will follow up with the experimental group and study group i mean uh, the control group and we will see them at equal or defined interval of period and in a standard manner where both should be examined the similar way there should not be any change and similar time duration and with equal intensity under the same given circumstances and in the same time, same time frame till the final outcome happens so there is no change between both the groups with the same time same intensity same duration same manner we will check so thus follow up may be short or may require many years depending upon the study undertaken this follow up can be few months also it can be years also depending upon the study design what we have opted for i mean the study duration what we have opted for so the essential difference here is in randomized trial, control trial and analytical studies if there is a substantial loss of group or we call it as attrition i hope you all remember that attrition if it is lost or uh, the member of people who are participating in study are gone then the results cannot be uh, applied to our reference population so we should always take very good care in minimizing these losses of follow up now coming to the assessment we examine after this uh, trial is completed is coming when you are coming to the end we assess whether this particular uh, experiment has given you positive results or negative results 
how we can say positive results that is the benefits of the experimental measure such as reduced incidence of the disease or severity of the disease or that new method has given you better cost benefit for the health services or better outcomes in the study and control groups. We will examine both the groups and see whether the experimental group has benefited by getting all these benefits like you know uh, less severity of the disease and there is better uh, health cost benefit to the people. So this will give you positive outcome. Whereas when we check the negative results what how we will assess the negativity we see the severity of the disease has increased or frequency of the side effects have been more or complications are more uh, even any death happened when the people or when we have uh, given the new drug to the people those things will give you the negative side effects or negative results of the out negative outcome of the new drug that has been tried so the incidence of positive or negative results is rigorously compared in between the control group and the experimental group so we will compare and see which is better and what are the things that are happening in the experiment so the differences are tested for statistical significance statistically we will see whether it is significant or not so there are techniques available for the analysis this analysis can be done sequentially also but usually what we do is in the end of the study so end of the trial only after finishing the trial we examine i mean we do the analysis of the data and we find out whether statistically significance is there or not from the particular experiment now we come to bias like how we have come across these biases in all even analytical studies also we have similar bias so these may arise from errors of assessment of the outcome due to human element these are of three sources first and foremost is subject to bias here participants that is subjectively feel better or report improvement if they know that they are being given new drug or new form of treatment suppose if i know that i am being given a better drug or new drug i subconsciously feel that i am feeling better or maybe i might say yes i am doing good so that is called as subjective variation we call it as subjective bias the next one is observer bias here the investigator who is measuring knows the therapeutic trial and he may be influenced that beforehand itself he can tell okay this particular drug is giving better results so he himself might say okay this particular treatment is giving you better results so he will record it as better so it is observer bias this is from the person who is observing the experiment and who is doing that <coughs> So if he knows beforehand the particular procedure or therapy to which patient has been subjected, he can be influenced by this particular procedure. And next is evaluation bias. Here investigation, investigator may subconsciously give a favorable report to the outcome of the trial. So in the observer he is reporting that things are better but here evaluation is giving you final thing that it is better only. Like sub, because he has an idea and he is the one who is evaluating the whole trial and this evaluator will give you subconsciously that this trial is better. So to avoid all these bias in randomized controlled trial we call a technique and we follow the technique to avoid these bias something called as blinding. Okay so this blinding will ensure us to give you a better outcomes. Let us see what this blinding is. Now blinding can be done in three ways. Single blind that is a participant is not aware whether he belongs to the study group or control group. Second that is you can avoid the, the first one single blind trial you can avoid the subjective variation. Second one is double blind trial neither the doctor nor the participant is aware of the group allocation and the treatment received here both the parties that is the patient and the doctor are not aware not aware of what is given to whom so you are taking care of subjective and even observer bias now coming triple blind the participant investigator and the person who is analyzing the data also so there is no evaluation bias also so these are the three types of bind, blinding which we do to uh, avoid the bias in randomized control trials 
ideally triple blinding should be used but double blinding is most frequently followed when a blind is conducted when trial is conducted so this is how we do randomized control trials and taking necessary precautions to avoid bias and following a procedure called as blinding now there are two types of randomized control trial designs one is concurrent parallel design and second one is crossover design let us see what is this concurrent parallel design now we select the subjects as i have told you all we allot them into subject group study group and second one into control group and we follow the uh, trial according to the period what we have agreed upon in the protocol or that what we have mentioned in the protocol and we continue till the end of the trial and we compare the outcome between both the groups so we are having two groups parallelly that is called as concurrent parallel design here you have both study group and control groups now let us see something called as in this situation what happens comparisons are made between two randomly assigned groups one group exposed to specific treatment and the other group not exposed patients remain in the study group or control group for a duration of investigation okay so we have two groups patient remain in their same one groups as we have allotted there is no change in this this is called as concurrent parallel study design now coming to crossover design here what happens we select the subjects and we allot the subjects into study group and control group we follow them for certain period of time and then we verify the outcome at that particular period after that the control group will become a study group and again study group will become a control group so we are switching the groups so but we have to give a washout period for the drug the effect of the drug to be washed away or maybe we can call it as the effect of the drug is not there anymore so we have a period of time where we give a washout period and then after that period we convert both the groups into opposite so study group will become a control group and control group will become a study group and then we will compare the outcome at that stage so this is a crossover design where same groups will be switched over this is another type of study design of randomized control trial with this study design each patient serves as his own control as before the patients are randomly assigned to a study group and control group and then the study group is converted into control and the control into vice versa so now the crossover studies offer a number of advantages as you can see all the patients can be assured that sometimes during the course of investigation they will receive the new therapy second economical as total number of patients required at the expense of the time necessary to complete the study is minimal is less comparatively but this method is not suitable if the drug of interest cures the disease and if the drug is effect effective only during a certain stage of the disease or if the disease changes radically during the period of time required for the study that means this study is not suitable if the drug of interest cures the disease because we want to see the complete outcome before itself if the things happen it might not give us the required result or if the drug is effective only during a certain stage of the disease or if it changes radically during the period of a time then it might be not it might not be of useful for us so the crossover studies offer a better advantage compared to the other one and let us see the types of randomized controlled trials so in this the first one is clinical trials preventive trials risk factor trials suggestion experiments trial of etiological agents evaluation of health services and community intervention trials these are the types of randomized control trials the previous one is the types of designs of randomized control trials with this randomized control trials we will come to an end i hope you all have understood the topic 
you can refer to the textbook also and if any doubts please get back to me thank you